everybody, it's Harry here. How are you doing this week? You'll notice that today I'm wearing my England football top. That's because we've got the World Cup going on in Brazil and England played the other day their second group game. Unfortunately, as, uh, as is kind of customary for England fans, we didn't get the result we were after. We lost 2-1 to Uruguay and that put us in a real difficult position in the group stage. The reason I'm telling you this story about World Cup football is because what was interesting was before the World Cup game started, the commentators were focusing on one player on the Uruguayan side, Luis Suarez. And that's because about a month ago he had knee surgery and no one thought he was really fit enough. In fact, he didn't really play, he didn't play at all in their first game where they themselves lost. And people were unsure whether he was going to play on that game. And in the end he did play, but they were saying, well, he's not going to be 100% fit. It's going to be like maybe 75% fit. And would that be enough of a, a fitness for him to really do damage to the England team. I think everyone agreed that from a 75% fitness point of view, he was able to do damage. But the thing that I noticed, which was probably more important, is that although yes, he might have only been 75% fit, he had knee surgery and everything like that, but he didn't have any surgery on his brain or his mind, but his mental fitness was 100% there. He was as sharp as ever. Both goals came from the guy they said was physically not fit. And that's the point I wanna make is that really it's not about just the physical fitness. It's so much more about your mental fitness. When you look at top tennis players or top golfers, the difference between a top golfer and the number 10 golfer is not a huge amount, but yet the top golfer earns 10 times, 100 times more than the number 10 golfer. And that's because their mental approach is just a little bit sharper than the number 10. Or if you look at the tennis players, I was reading the autobiography from Rafa Nadal and he was saying that, in fact, when you look at all these top 50 tennis players out on the practice courts, there's not a huge amount between them. But when they get onto like stages like Wimbledon and the Open and all these kind of major championships, that's when the mental toughness really takes hold. And this is why my focus is always on train the mind and the rest will follow because first you have to have that mental toughness and then yes, the physical toughness is immensely important. But if you want to achieve things in life, if you want to get to that high performance level in life, then you really need to have that mental fitness and not just the physical fitness. And having a positive mental fitness is not just for achieving and high performance, but it's also massively important for your health and your energy and your vitality. In fact, I watched a really, really interesting speech the other day uh, delivered at Google by a doctor and she was talking about how important the mind played in healing and in illness and curing and all of that kind of stuff. In fact, it's such a good lecture and I really want you to get the full benefits that I'm linking it below. So please do check that out because it will show just how important it is in addition to all the kind of healthy eating and the green drinks and the exercise and the sleep and all that kind of stuff. But you've got to have the right mental approach as well. That's why it's so important. So this week, I just want you to stew on that. I just want you to think to yourself, okay, I'm getting the physical fitness down. I'm getting the kind of high performance from a physical point of view down, but what am I needing to do from a mental point of view to get me to that next level, to get me sharp again? That's all for this week. Have a fantastic week. Enjoy the World Cup if that's your thing, and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.